So let's try a little example with crystal field theory. And we're going to try that um, with molybdenum moly 2 plus. Now at this point, it's ideal uh, if you have a periodic table. If you don't, I guess you just can imagine it in your mind, or trust me, whatever you prefer. So, um, if you vaguely remember electron configurations from Chem 2A, you've got to do that sort of stuff again. We need to know how many electrons are here. So, uh, what you'll find is that Molly is in the sixth column of the periodic table. Because it's in the sixth column, uh, when, if it's plus two, it's only going to have four electrons. If that kind of makes sense. Because for each column you add one electron. Just like when we did valence electrons in Chem 2A. So because it's in the sixth column, that would be six electrons if it was neutral, but four electrons. And the way we uh, annotate that uh, is put a D superscript four, meaning there's four electrons in the D orbital. Okay. Well, let's uh, consider this as octahedral, and let's fill in its crystal field uh, theory diagram. If it's octahedral, it must look like this, with three on the bottom and two on top, the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz, and we've got the dx squared minus y squared, and the dz squared. What I want to do, and this is distance, or this energy difference is delta. So remember, the three d orbitals that are off axis are low energy. The two d orbitals that are on axis are higher energy. OK, what I want to do is fill in four electrons here. So let's do that. One, two, three. And again, I'm filling in four because I figured out it's a d4, or there's four electrons in the d orbitals. One, two, three. Now, the question is, where is the fourth one going to go? Well, there's two options. One is it could go here. <coughs> so it pairs with the first one. But there's also a second option. Let me draw this diagram again. dxy, dyz, dxz, dx squared minus y squared, and dz squared. There's another option. I could have done this. One, two, three, and instead of pairing the fourth electron on the lower level, it could have said, hey, I want to be unpaired. You go up there. So it has two choices, that fourth one. It could be uh, down low or up high. So the question is how to choose between what's called a delta versus the pairing energy. That is how much energy it takes to pair. So is delta a bigger factor? If delta is so big, then it probably rather pair. It takes less energy to pair. If delta is really tiny, it's a small distance between these two. Electrons don't like to pair because electrons don't want to be next to each other. So that other one would rather go up here. It would be as if uh, you had a, a building, and there was four people who lived in that building, and there was five beds. So, and those four people didn't like each other. Well, are those four people, is that fourth person who comes home too late at night, is saying like, well, I don't want to go up to the second story, that's too much energy. So, I'll just sleep with this dude in his bed. Or, he's like, I hate that dude so much, I would rather walk up to the next story and sleep up here. So it's that kind of decision that the electrons go through. How, uh, let me say a little bit about that decision. Okay, if delta is greater than, I'll just say P, the pairing energy, if delta is greater than P, meaning delta is really big, that second story is way, way high and it doesn't want to walk up there, then that's this case on the left-hand side, and that's what we uh, term as low spin or strong field. If delta 
is really tiny and the pairing energy is really big, then that fourth entity would rather go up to the next story and go up there to that orbital. And that's what we term as high spin and a weak field. Okay? So, uh, why the term spin? Well, spin, if you vaguely remember chapter 8 of Chem 2A, we had a spin quantum number, m sub s. And spin basically, uh, quote, increases the more unpaired electrons there are. So there's higher spin here because there's more unpaired electrons. Low spin here because there's only two unpaired electrons. What does field have to do with? So field has to do uh, with delta. Strong field means delta is large. Weak field means delta is really tight. Okay? So that's where that terminology uh, comes from. 